Right, the Bible says that in the way he should go and he will never depart from it. That might leave us thinking, oh my, the training has been done. But like the need always says, everyone loves the Gospel of John because he always speaks about love. But I also like the Gospel of John because he also says, my children. He speaks of us as children. And we are also God's children. And we're going to be God's children for eternity. That's why when we get to heaven, we're going to keep on learning. And learning is absolutely my passion. So we can be encouraged that we can still be trained and still go in the way and not depart from the, um, the direction that we should go. So today, I'm going to share a little bit about this beautiful learning progress um, pr um, process in our minds, this beautiful power station that we're all walking around with. It is just such a fascinating um, concept. But before I start, I would just like to pray. Dear Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. And may not I, but Christ be seen. And may whatever I say be acceptable and honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Right. So with the day you were born, you got these beautiful things in your mind about, if you said you've never received a gift, you got about one uh, billion of them. They're called neurons and they are called brain cells. How we use them, however, we're not going to speak about today entirely. This is just a beautiful graph to show you that we were geared to learn. These are neurological networks forming from a one-month-old baby. You'll see, the, you'll see uh, the three month, you'll see the six month, and then you'll see the 15 month. And actually in the brain it is beautiful because it looks like fireworks going on the whole day. And these little things are your best friends because they never ever sleep. You think you're sleeping, but they're still going and they're still there and they are your best friend in creativity, problem solving, and everything and anything that you need. So this is more or less electricity that is flowing constantly in your brain. Now today I want to speak about, a little bit about a neuroscientific approach about how to memorize scripture. Uh, now this is one of those little gifts that you received. This is a neuron and uh, sorry I don't have my pointer here but you will see away on your left side you have your cell body and then you have your dendrites and then you have this little chain that's going um, and that's going, that's moving along, it's called your axon and then if you can see on your right side you have your axon terminals uh, Oh, I got a light. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So over there you have your, um, your little cell body, nucleus. There you have dendrites. All of these have functions that I'm not going to speak about. Here you have your ac axon path. And then you have your axon terminals. Now this is only one cell. And information flows through your neurons. And they communicate with each other. So they make little... They make little paths. They build massive networks. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. And then they communicate with each other uh, through um, neurotransmitting substances that I'm, I'm not going to speak about today. It's a, it's a big subject on its own. But what I want you to look at, what I'm speaking about today, is the axon. And on the axon, you can see the yellow. That's called your myelin sheath. Your myelin sheath. Now, what you want for your axons, you want a very thick myelin sheath. It's like um, insulation tape around a wire. The thicker the myelin sheath is, the faster the information will flow through. So if it's thin, take a little bit long to think. <laughs> and if it is thick, it goes, it goes very fast. When you've learned and you're writing an exam, uh, most of us have had that before, and the information just go, you know that myelin, Jesus is sick. When you have to go, mm, I know it, I'm getting there, it's over there, yes, you maybe could have studied a little bit more. So we want to make this myelin sheath as thick as possible. Just for interest's sake, the two things that break it down, sugar, aluminium. It's just uh, for interest's sake. So how do we 
go about making this myelin sheath as thick as possible. Two things, it's intensity of experience and repetition. Repetition, you find in school, you go over and over and over and over and over and we did our, our, our times tables that way and it never really made sense to me. Um, but there's another way of, of learning. And then intensity of experience, this has to do with your five senses. We actually have six. You have your, you have touch, you have smell, you have your eyes, you have your ear, your ears, you have your mouth, and you also have movement. That is your sixth sense. So the more of these senses that are incorporated into your learning experience, the better you will learn, the thicker your myelin sheath will become, and the faster the information will flow. It's, um, it's very simple. So if you have paper and you want to write down, or you just want to make a note mentally, we have repetition, we have intensity of experience. That's what you want while you're memorizing scripture. The other thing that I want to speak about is memory. How do we store information? Very simple. You store information, number one, when it is relevant to you. Has anyone ever explained something to you and it is really not relevant and you're thinking, mm, and it goes over? It's like when I ask my husband, please bring me flowers. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> he does bring me flowers. I don't. He picks them outside. That's how my husband brings me flowers. <laughs> Just had to get that in there. Anyway, sometimes it goes like that between uh, married couples. Like, this is not relevant. <laughs> so it must be relevant for you to be able to store it. And it must be able, very simply, to attach to previous information. So the previous information that you have stored works like glue in your brain. And if you want to store new information, it needs to stick to that glue, if that makes sense. If you don't have those two components, you're not going to remember what's being said or what you have learned. So we have four things. We have intensity of experience. You have repetition. You have it must be relevant. And you need to have prior knowledge that you have stored for um, to be able to memorize scripture optimally. And then our senses come into it again. This, this is the biggest ball game. Our six, remember? God knows this because he created us. The adversary, the devil, knows that because everything that is geared to distract us from God is geared specifically to intensify the experience of your senses. Have you ever thought while you go to the movies, they switch off the lights? Because visually, it's your strongest sense just for interest sake. That's all that you are focusing on. Then you have the sound and you have the surround sound, so you have the ears. You have the taste because everyone is eating when they sit there. You are moving. Um, you can just move a little bit. It triggers the cerebellum. So while you move, it triggers your memory. So that whole system is actually geared for that repetition and that intensity of experience, just for interest sake. That's just one of it. Um, just so you know, God knows it, the adversary knows it, but do we know it? Now, to get those four components, this is going to sound, maybe sound very strange, but it does work. So if you attach a memory verse to routine things that you do every day, who brushes their teeth every day? I, please don't raise your hands. <laughs> I hope you all do. Who takes a shower every day? Who walks to the car every day? There are certain things that we do automatically that we don't even think about. So it's already stored in memory and it is relevant. It is repetition because you are doing it. It is intensity of um, experience because all the senses are busy focusing on these stars to help you to get there. I'm seeing people are looking <laughs> like, what? So how do you attach God's word in memorizing scripture? If you take, you only start with one scripture verse. It does work. Let's say, for instance, you, you have to create the habit, obviously. You, you walk to your car. And you just, every day, say, this is the one scripture that I'm going to memorize. You walk to your car and you say, quickly, the, the righteous shall walk in his integrity and his children shall be blessed after it. Proverbs 27. That's it. You're walking. Your cerebellum is being 
is being triggered, memory, and that's all you do every day. And after a while, you start to do that automatically without even thinking. There you have one down, so it is, it is internalized. There you then you can add another one. You go out, you look up, and you see, you say, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my health come from? My health comes from the God who made heaven and earth. You're in the car, you're going. All of these things are part of your daily routine, daily life. Um, and if the one is laid down, you'll see that myelin sheath that I spoke to you about, it's becoming so thick that it's, it's, it's going so fast. You don't even really have to think about it, not where it is, not, not where, you know, where it's written in the Bible. It just goes so fast because you're building a network in your brain and all the neurons are attaching. And then you go on, simple thing. If you, are, you brush your teeth, you know you have to, that's what my dentist said. She's my friend, so I said, I'm not sure if I believe you. You have to brush your teeth for two minutes a day. Two minutes is a lot in my day. I'm a mom. But if you brush your teeth for two minutes and you go, let your speech always be seasoned. Let your speech always be with grace and seasoned with salt. Colossians 4 verse 6. There you go. Okay, good. Go. And you do that every day. The moment you pick up your toothbrush, future-wise, and you start brushing your teeth, that verse will come into your mind without you even thinking about it. Then you go on. All of us switch on lights and switch off lights. Who of you have a lamp stand next to your bed? You just switch off the lamp and you go, thy word is a lamp onto my feet and a light onto my path. Switch. There you go. And the more you create it, um, the thicker the myelin sheath, and not just the sheath, the network, because now remember all the other neurons are starting to attach, so it's, it's becoming this, this massive big... Uh, network and then if you've got Colossians 4 verse 6 down it's going to go so fast your 10 minutes is going to feel extremely long then you add another one and you say if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead you are saved Romans 10 verse 9 there you have another and it's becoming ingrained inside of you it's kind of like um, King David said can I just eat your word and you know, process it in my, in my intestines, but that you're processing it in, in your brain. And then another example, I'm just giving you examples, is the moment you touch your Bible. The moment you touch your Bible and you go, John chapter 1, you go, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was good with God, the Word was God, in the beginning He was with God. That's it. Just by picking up your Bible, just the touch, the movement, the sense, everything uh, is, is connected to, together. And you have this massive experience of the Bible and, and Scripture without even realizing it. And the same with our children. If we implant the Word of God in their everyday life, everything, that little habits that they do that they're going to continue with when they're older, you cannot take that away from them. And that's why the Bible says and teaches that in everything you do, whether you sit, whether you stand, whether you are on the road, whether you're traveling, teach these things to your children, but not just your children, uh, to yourself as well. And you can attach this to all of the little activities and routines that you do during the day. And then God becomes life, and this life will set you free. And this life is the light, and the light shone in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it because the neurological networks were so strongly formed that that light could not penetrate. There was no space. There was no um, time during the day. And we all, we're running. We're like running people. It's madness. I can't even have breakfast in the morning, to be honest. Then we're late. I, I, it's just, it's just how it works. You kind of cut stuff out of your, out of your, out of your day that are actually necessary to live and survive because we need to keep at this pace. Maybe it's just my organizational skills. But I just looked on Mon, we started school on Monday and the children are like, yay, we're back at school. And the moms are going, <laughs> you know, when they walk into the classroom. So I hope and pray that this little bit of information, very simply explained, can help you to use this beautiful gift and tool that God has made you. Strengthen, strengthen, strengthen your experience with the Word with as many senses as you possibly can for our children, our young people, and ourselves. Uh, and that gives me hope. Because God knows it, our adversary knows it, but do we know it?
Let's close our eyes and pray. Dear Father, thank you for the beauty that we find in the way that you created us. I stand in absolute awe every time I just learn a little bit more. And I can just imagine you standing next to all of us saying, go on, search a little bit more, get to know me more. And uh, we're so excited to one day be able to keep on learning and have this intensity of experience in heaven and the new earth of seeing you, touching you, smelling you, just knowing that you are there with, with all of our senses. May you bless every person who heard this message and may they at least in Jesus' name memorize one scripture this way so they can start this process of really enjoying your word and making it part of every little part of their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.